Hello fellow synesthesias, my name is Christina and welcome to another Let's Get Reels movie review. Today is Classic Movie Thursdays here on my channel, my version of Throwback Thursdays. And today I am joined by Lizzie! Woo! And I will link her channel down below because we did a video over there and you should go watch it because we're cool. Yeah. And today we're going to be reviewing Daddy Long Legs with Fred Astaire and Lindsay Caron because Lizzie actually saw it on Broadway. So I figured it'd be really cool to compare and contrast the movie and the Broadway show. And of course there's always differences. And we kind of paid attention to it last night because my brain was so dead. I it was, was traveling. Also just a long movie it in was general. A, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was good. So let's explain what the story is first. Um, Fred Astaire's character, Jervis Pentland, he is like a, a millionaire or whatever. He's a businessman, he's very wealthy, and uh, he has to go to France, I forget for what reason. And he meets Leslie Caron's character, Juliette Andre, and he sees that she has a lot of talent, she's very smart. He wants to bring her over to the States, so he does, and honestly, I don't remember the rest of the story. Basically, she yeah. comes to school and she spends all her time writing John Smith That's right, letters because it's part of the arrangement. Is She writes him letters talking about her studies, what she's learning, and she's not supposed to expect a response. Yeah. But they don't make that as clear in the movie. They make it much more clear in the show. Yeah. But... And he, she calls him Daddy Long Legs because when he was in France, a kid saw him in the shadow mm -hmm. and, you know, the shadow is elongated, so... And he's already really tall. Yeah. So it yeah. went even longer. Mm -hmm. So throughout the movie, you see her drawing this, like, long-legged character mm -hmm. who she's picturing as her daddy. But she also yeah. pictures him kind of older and, you know, she doesn't think of him as a young or youngish um, mm -hmm. person who is able to supply for someone her age. She thinks of him as some old guy that's like, oh, I got all this money, let me, you yeah. know, help someone. Yeah, and it's just kind of like, you know, whenever she feels down, she's like, oh, hey, Daddy Long Legs, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened. And then, you know, of course he knows who she's writing to, he gets the letters, and after a while, I think he finally does, like, really meet her because... Well, he feels yeah. bad because she's writing these letters and, like, pouring out her heart and mm -hmm. not getting anything in response. And you yeah. can kind of, like, tell through the letters that she kind of just is getting more like meh at yeah. him because she's like, I thought you were so nice, I thought you were going to be all these great things, mm -hmm. and then you suck. And so then he feels bad, so he introduces himself as who he really is, which is her roommate's uncle, mm -hmm. um, and they kind of like start to fall for each other, but they're not supposed to because of like him being such high in status and her being like kind of really a nobody other than mm -hmm. being really smart and doing well in school. Yeah. Um, so then people try to ruin them and mm -hmm. not let them be together. <laughs> of course, it's like classic Hollywood standard type of deal, which kind of usually like gets on my nerves. I kind of got hung up on like the whole age thing because my problem is I know how old Fred Astaire was at the time. He was like 56 and Leslie Caron I think was in her like 20s, 30s possibly by this time, but she's supposed to be like 18. So I was thinking like Fred Astaire's 56 years old falling for like an 18 year old. So like that kind of bothered me, which is really stupid because it was just in my head that I was thinking that. And also like, it's kind of like new Hollywood now. They would pair the older actors with the younger actresses. And that like really, I know it kind of made Cary Grant upset every time he would be like, well, I'm so much older and these girls are all getting younger. So that was like a little weird to see because Fred Astaire was, you know, obviously so much older than Leslie Caron. Well, and like, the story's kind of like creepy in that way too. Yeah, but I mean, partially that's just the time period it yeah. is, is that yeah, a lot of true. girls ended up being with people who were older than them yeah. because they needed someone that's to take true. care of them. But yeah. in the musical, she, I think he's actually supposed to be younger. Like he's supposed to be mid thirties. Okay. So that's not too So bad. not as bad. It was pretty cool. I actually like seeing Fred Astaire play the drums because I love the drums and he was doing a really good job. Like, yeah. I'm not a professional in any way. I took drum lessons for a while, but he was doing a pretty good job keeping up and you know, his dancing's always great. And of course there are dance numbers that are like five hours there long. There were a lot of dance numbers. Yeah, and I mean, they're good, but when you only slept for four hours the night before and you can't talk straight or think straight after a while, they're just way too long. Yeah. And 
I mean, I can, I appreciate them. They're good. What I fast forwarded through was really good. Yeah, I mean, they looked really good in fast forward. Yeah, and the costumes are always great. I don't think this was MGM, but whatever studio it was, they did a really good job with the costumes. It, and there was like certain aspects that really reminded me of an American in Paris and the I just I like that. I like the yeah, costumes. Yeah. We were joking throughout the whole time we'd like see a new costume and be like, "No, no, no, but I call that one. You can't yeah. have it." Yeah, the costumes were really good. The designers, Gorgeous. yeah, the designers um I've never heard of before and I don't remember their names, but um she just they had put Leslie Caron in such beautiful suits. They almost looked like Dior suits, but they weren't. They're just beautiful. And and one dress that she wore was um uh, like a white dress. That's the one that you wanted. I wanted the suit <laughs> and like all the black dresses. Like she wore this other black dress that was similar to the the white one that she wore. I'm like, mine. Yeah. Um, when there was the one dress that you said looked so much like. Madame yeah. X. There's there's a painting called Madame X by my favorite artist John Singer Sargent. One of Leslie Caron's dresses is very similar to the one that Madame X wears in Sargent's painting. So I will let you go look that up because it's really cool. It was a little bit confusing for me because they changed the names when they did the musical. And so sh the main character was named Julie Juliet mm -hmm. Andre. Um, but in the musical, Jervis's niece is named Julia. And then the main character is Jerusha because it takes place in America, which they did because of the actress, right? Yeah, Leslie Caron is French. I mean, thick accent and everything well not too thick but she's got an accent and for Hollywood whenever they had somebody who was foreign they had to figure out well they can't be put in like middle America they can't be put you know just say they're from New York and live there all their life and like still have an accent and so they had to say that um, Jervis found Juliet in uh, France in an orphanage in France and that's why she was brought over to America yeah, so it was a little confusing at that because every time they would say her name, I kept thinking of his niece, and it <laughs> wasn't his niece. Yeah. Um, so that was a little confusing, but I think they did a very good job, or I guess the musical did a good job of portraying this story. The musical has absolutely beautiful music, and the score behind it is just amazing. Uh, they just redid the cast album for that, so it has some newer songs that are so wonderful and I'm addicted to it mm -hmm. so you guys should check that out if you haven't yeah and Lizzie did a review for it at my suggestion because I'm just that cool so <laughs> I'm to my own one so I'm going to link it down below and you go watch it because it's really good and I believe that is our review for the movie daddy long yeah. legs it was good I would give it like three and a half out of five stars. Okay. It was a little lengthy yeah. for me. <laughs> for because me, yeah. I don't watch a lot of movies, as she knows. Mm -hmm. So sitting through it was a little bit anxious, but it was a good movie overall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the production values, this is old Hollywood. So the production values, even if it was a lower studio, were still great. Fred Astaire's dancing is incredible, as always. Um, Leslie Caron, she was fabulous. Um, it's just, it's a good movie. The story is decent. I'm not too crazy about stories like that. So yeah, I mean, it was based off of a book, I believe that mm -hmm. someone wrote. So they were going with that kind of look to it, um, trying to kind of base it off of that story. So plotline was a little shallow, but it made for a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then also in old Hollywood, they changed a lot of names and change a lot of things to fit a movie and the movie audience as well. So there is our review for Daddy Long Legs. If you like this review in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have seen Daddy Long Legs either as a movie or on Broadway. And if you have seen it on Broadway, I will be sure to pass it along to Lizzie. <laughs> and if you like this review, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future classic movie Thursdays and other movie reviews because that's what I like to do here. I like to review movies. And as always, keep watching movies and stay absolutely fabulous.